Hello everybody, welcome back. Carl again. Thanks for checking back in. Today I want to talk about the Tentacle Mini Shield, along with the Atlas Scientific RTD stamp, and then a temperature probe. And I have a temperature probe just going into a cup of ice water, so that I can use that for calibration. Now the ice water is actually uh, RODI water and ice. Uh, they, you can use distilled water if you don't have RODI, but that gives you the best results. And I have an LCD, which is my typical I2C LCD. And the code, when I put down below, I'll actually put the code for an I squared C and a regular L LCD shield. So if you have that set up. But I'm just going to go through the procedures that you need to do to set this up for I2C mode. Now, when these come from the factory, they come in UART or serial mode. And with the mini shield, you cannot switch it on the shield. You actually have to pull the stamp off and put it on the breadboard. So let's get set up for that, and we'll show you that procedure. Okay, so if you go to the White Box Labs homepage, which I'll put a link in the description below, if you go over here to the top right and click on Tentacle Shield, and then over here on the left it says Tentacle Mini Quick Start. So we're going to come to this page. So from the Tentacle Mini Quick Start, it talks about I2C mode. Now the, the problem is, is that you have to put it in I2C mode from the factory. So if you click on this link here, which is the top page, the top of the page, talks about I2C or UART, and it goes through the whole list of procedures. Now down here at the bottom, it talks about how you can manually switch between UART and I2C. And it talks about that you have to remove the circuit from the tentacle shield, Put in a breadboard, short the PGND pen to TX, give it power and ground. Now, that is actually not the correct procedure for the RTD stamp. That works for the pH stamp, but not the RTD. So, if we go back to the Quick Start page at the bottom, it gives you the list of data sheets. My advice to you is just to open the data sheet up. So, here it is at the bottom. We'll click on that. Uh, this will actually open up the data sheet. And if we scroll down a couple pages here, manually switch into UART and manually switch into I2C. So we'll just click on manually switch into I2C. And in fact, you actually have to short the PRB pen to TX, not this pen as the quick start instructions say. Now, I did look at the PH stamp, and that is actually the PH stamp you actually short the PGND pen to TX. So it's a little different based upon which stamp you have. And that's why my suggestion is just open the data sheet. All right, so let's get that set up on the breadboard, and we'll go ahead and do that procedure. Okay, so here you can see I have the stamp on the breadboard. I have uh, power for VCC. I have ground, which runs over to the ground pen at the top. And then I have that PRB and TX pen shorted. Now, the data sheet says when you plug it in, it's going to change from green to blue. Once that's done, you pull the TX PRB jumper wire and then disconnect power, and then you can sit, stick it back in the shield. So I'll just plug it into the computer here. Uh, you can watch this LED in the top corner there. And there's green, and it goes to blue, so we'll disconnect this wire. You disconnect that wire before you remove power, and then I can remove VCC. So now we can get rid of the jumper wires. We'll pull the stamp off. Now you need to make sure that when you put it on the board, you actually get it the right way around. And you can see it says ground at the top, and on the tentacle shield, it's actually labeled here at the top as well. Ground, TX, and RX. So we'll stick this in there. I'll plug in my temperature probe, and there we have it. Okay, so back at the data sheet, uh, one thing you need to know is that it talks about uh, if this is done to the class RTD temperature circuit, it will set the I2C address to the default of 102. So you need to remember that 102. Now back at the tentacle uh, quick start guide, it says you're going to want to load this tentacle setup sketch. And so we'll click on that and we'll hit control A, which will highlight the whole screen right click, copy, and then we're going to paste it into a new Arduino sketch. So now what we can do is actually upload this sketch to the Arduino. Okay, so once you open the serial port from the Arduino, um, I know that the code is 102. However, if you don't know, you can just type scan I2C in the bar, 
and it actually would return all your values. So we'll type 102 and press enter. That'll switch us to uh, our particular I2C channel, and you can see it says active channel and gives you some information. So to take a read-in, you just type R and press enter. That will take a one read-in. You just see it gives us a command of success and then returns 3.460. So that's the temperature that it's actually telling me that the water is. Now, it's in ice water, so technically what should be, it should be reading zero. So it's just a couple degrees off. Now, the other thing is, here in the North America of the United States, I'm actually in Maryland, we particularly use Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So, to switch, if you go to the data sheet, it talks about, it gives you commands on how to switch the temperature. S, C is Celsius, S, F is Fahrenheit, and S, K is Kelvin. So, I'm going to switch to Fahrenheit, so we'll do S, F, we'll press Enter. That'll give us a success, and now if we do R, it'll actually give us a read in, in Fahrenheit, which it's telling me is 38.186. So it should be 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, my probe has been in the water for about 10 minutes, so it should be pretty well there. I just go went ahead and mixed it around. Make sure that I have a good, stable read in. And you can see we're, we're down a couple degrees now, 36 degrees. All right, so let's go to the calibration setup now. So in the data sheet, it recommends that you use boiling water. However, because I'm down here in the workshop and I don't have an easily means of boiling water and then showing you guys on video, I'm going to use ice water. But later on, I will actually do the boiling water. What I'm going to do is just take my laptop upstairs, set it next to the cooktop, boil some water with a probe in it, and calibrate. So if we scroll down back to the I2C and we go to calibration, which is right here on page 41, you do cal comma n, where n is the temperature that you want to calibrate. Um, another command could be cal comma clear if you want to clear it out, or cal comma question mark gives you the temperature that you have. So we'll go back to our window, and we're going to type cal comma 32, because that's the temperature of my water, and we're going to press enter. And you can see here, it gives us cal comma 32 is the command, and it tells me success. So now I'm going to give it the code of R, and it gives me exactly 32 degrees. Okay, so that pretty much sets up how we do the basic setup. Now let's do something actually useful. So what I'll do is I'm going to get set up for the LCD, and we're going to disconnect the computer so that we can actually run the device on the LCD. Um, stand by one second. Here's the code I'm going to use for my LCD. I will put a link for this code down below. And this just talks about it's using some of the default code from Atlas as well as from Whitebox Labs. And uh, they particularly wrote this code so that it works on all Arduino. So it might not be the most efficient, but it will work. We have the wire library. We also have uh, the defined default address. Now remember, I know mine is 102, so that's what I made it. Um, a lot of this code is actually copy and paste from the pH stamp that I had uh, done in a video one. So it's really a matter of just changing some terminology. I'm using this particular um, library, the Liquid Twill. And uh, here's the link for that. And that's how I use the I2C library for my particular LCD. Um, I like this because it only uses two pens and it's pretty quick. Uh, it's a basically a, a rewritten code from Lady Ada of Adafruit. She did the uh, LCD backpack, and then uh, this particular uh, gentleman actually uh, rewrote it and made it more efficient. So we just have a couple quick declares in the beginning. Uh, we actually start the LCD, some print some terminology to it. And essentially what happens is it just sends that R code request. So it's basically just doing it for us. It's writing the R code and getting the data back. Uh, once it comes back, it puts it into an array, and then it just prints the stuff, prints it to the LCD, and then we also make it a float. Now, the difference between a constant integer and a float is the number of zeros after the decimal point. So typically, if you read the temperature, it would give you just 32 as an integer. However, if you wanted 32.000, for example, that's a float number. So we're just going to get both of those. Then we're going to wait five seconds. 
for the result. So we'll just upload this to our sketch. All right, and let me uh, move the camera so you can see what we have. All right, so I'll press the reset button so you can see it from the beginning here. So when it boots up, you see it says Tentacle Mini with Atlas RTD. And it gives it a couple seconds, and then it displays the temperature. All right, so remember the top line is the regular temperature, and the bottom line is the float. So actually, it, we don't even need the float because we're already getting three-digit di three resolution from the top line. So we can delete that part of the code. But as you can see, every five seconds takes the temperature reading and actually gives me a temperature display. Let me just mix my water around here, and we'll give it a second. You can see it actually went a little lower than 32 degrees. But nevertheless, you get the idea. All right, guys, so I'll go ahead and post code down below for this particular sketch that I'm using here with the I2C uh, backpack, as well as the regular LCD. If you don't have this particular setup, it'll still work for you. Uh, the other thing is, typically when you see a bunch of sketches, it makes it easier for you to integrate. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, remember, check out whitebox, whiteboxes.ch. That's how you get the Tentacle Shield and the Tentacle Mini. You can also buy the Atlas Scientific stuff there as well. I did order the this particular RTD stamp along with the temperature probe. The setup, the ordering process was super simple. You just add it to the cart. You can pay with PayPal. You can pay with a credit card. They give you a discount for paying with a credit card instead of PayPal. And then the shipping was set up. Came to my house in less than a week. I don't remember the exact amount of days, but I think it was about four days it came to my house. I do believe they are shipping from Switzerland. So... You know, four days processing time isn't bad. Super simple process to check out, though. I really do like the way that the process worked. Remember, also hit the thumbs up button down below. It really helps out a lot. And I'll catch you in the next video.